Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's uh, today's installment of uh, cichlids and coffee. And um, before we get going, I want to welcome everybody that's on the stream and uh, make some minor adjustments just to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. And let's welcome everybody that's here. And also um, a shout out, of course, my usual shout out to the uh, to my wonderful moderators, Candy, Kevin, GP, and uh, Denny, best moderators on YouTube. Thank you so much for your help during today's live stream. And um, I hope you all can hear me okay. And if you can, just go ahead and note it in the uh, just note it in the chat that you're getting good sound. Last week there was a little bit of an issue with the sound because um, it was on me. It was a mistake I made. I had uh, a couple mics going and it was creating a little bit of an echo. And so um, I know I created a problem for some of you. I think James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack thought he was going crazy. <laughs> According to his comments. <laughs> so at any rate, I think I've got it fixed. And uh, let me know. Just give me some kind of a sign here on the uh, on the comments on on the uh, on the sound, and I can uh, make any necessary adjustments. Thank you, uh, Richard Maloney, for being the first one here today, the early bird. Richard, send me your uh, your address at ben o cichlid at gmail, and I'm going to send you out some stickers. And I don't care where you are in the world, I will send them anywhere. Thank you for being. Uh, early today and thank you to last week's super chats if i missed you uh raymond bms raymond bms not sure if you're here today clint's aqua tanks thank you for the super chat last week and gp your vendor one of my moderators always generous with his super chats the super chats are where you can throw a little money at the channel help out with uh fish equipment things of that nature and uh investing in the in the eight to ten foot tank project and the camera project that I'm on right now. Also a special welcome to the far away viewers. I think last week we had George over in uh, let me see in Scotland. We had George in Scotland and we had Nathan over in New Zealand and several, you know, quite a few other people from all over the world. Thank you so much folks from far away who tune into this uh, to this live chat. So um, let's see here. Michael, hello, Michael. Hello, Tracy Ann. Hey, Denny, I'm glad you're here. And uh, Ray, Holly Gibbs, thank you. Thank you for joining. Kijeld Sylvest Overgaard. Oh, my God, what a great name. And uh, thank you for uh, showing up, my friend. And Holly, uh, Holly Gibbs. Hey, Holly Gibbs and everybody else, welcome to the chat. So um, let's do the little... Uh, the little transition I love to do at the beginning of my videos. Let's go. All right. All righty. So we have a lot to cover here today. And uh, let's first get into uh, what uh, I usually do, which let's go into... A quick little look at what's been going on and uh, we've had some really cool stuff going on here I want to cover with you and uh, had about had some videos that were released and and um, they, they, they got a good response I think this is a hot topic uh, of course we had that last week's uh, last week's live stream uh, it was almost at about 2,000 views, and this is where I got into that that whole idea of a large, um, you know, of a large substrate or sand bed in a tank, and using that to harbor your beneficial bacteria. And I, I got a whole range of of interesting comments from people, uh, comments that went from, you know, I'm bare bottom with with sponges, and uh, all the way to I. I, I have a deep substrate and I haven't touched my my substrate in years 
and my tank is rock solid stable. So I, I, I saw a whole variety of comments. It was very interesting to me what I saw and uh, really appreciate the input that I got from everybody on that. And let's see here. So the um, the other the the, the video that, that kind of killed it and that, that did really, really well and surprised me how well it did because it was something I just sort of put together uh, and it was tied into the topic. If you remember in the last live stream, I showed a, a thumbnail that I thought I was going to use and at the last minute I changed it for one that would be a little bit more impactful and uh, the results were actually very, very interesting uh, in that the uh, the video the video just sort of rocketed and you can see here it just went right up to about 25,000 views which for my channel to have a video go 25,000 right away I mean for somebody like uh, Corey or uh, a Joey over at the King of DIY or something like that 25,000 is nothing I mean that's like a uh, a flop for someone like that but for me to have a video to go to 25,000 views right away that was very very uh, very cool and uh, I really appreciate you folks actually watching that, watching that video and uh, commenting, the conversation. And I invite you folks who haven't watched that video to go to it and see some of the conversation that took place because that was very, very interesting. The uh, comments under that video, uh, people talking about the different ways that they've been able to um, stabilize their tanks, how often they, they, they work on their tanks, what they do when they work on their tanks. Uh, some some of the uh, old dudes like me actually were on there talking about what they've been doing for 50 years and how what's old has come back around again and it's new again. And uh, anyway, it, it's worth watching. Uh, it's worth going to just to see the uh, some of the comments that that occurred. And uh, we also had some 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 milestones on the channel itself, which again I thank I thank all of you for that. Uh, we hit uh, 1.1 million. Uh, watch time minutes in a 28 day period, which is actually very, very cool. Uh, I think I usually was averaging about 170 um, or, or rather just under, under, uh, uh, you know, well under a million, maybe 700, 800,000, something. Anyway, 1.1 million watch time minutes uh, was a milestone. Uh, 218,000 point three views in 28 days where normally I average about 170,000. So that was really, really good. And uh, we picked up uh, 1,600 subscribers. So it was, a, it was a great month and I thank all of you. And uh, for those of you who are watching and haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that sub button, hit that bell, and let, let's keep this momentum going and let's, uh, let's get it really rolling. I, I, I love what I'm seeing, I'm love, I love the reaction I'm getting. So, um, at any rate, I also did a video on having to move some fish around uh, for a variety of reasons. The, um, I had some fish that had outgrown the 60 gallon and they had to, they, they, they had to get out of there. Uh, they were getting bit too big for the lethronops that are in there. I have a, a lethronops are very, very docile, a beautiful fish. If you're not familiar with lethronops, look up lethronops, especially the, uh, uh, Lethronops Gold, Mon I think it's called Monkey Bay uh, Gold, and also the uh, the Red Cap is beautiful. I have a Red Cap, and uh, anyway, just gorgeous fish. And um, the ones that were in there were getting a little bit too big for um, uh, for the Lethronops, so I had to move out the the uh, the, the uh, Sand Diver. I moved out the uh, the Sulphur Head, and uh, the Gar was moved out to living stone I were moved out so it was like a pretty big move a pretty big move out of that 60 gallon and that 60 gallon has two canisters and a large hang on back filter so that the fish that are left back in there are just like in paradise because they have hardly any you know a very reduced bio load a lot of filtration and so they're uh, they're living the good life meanwhile uh, the situation in the 100 is pretty packed uh, for being uh, for running just off of two power heads and an FX6. So I'm probably going to add some additional filtration on there and I'm going to thin that tank out as well. I'm probably going to move out the uh, that large dragon blood I have in there and uh, maybe a couple other fish. We'll see. We'll see. The, the Malawi hawk might be ready 
uh, to come out of that tank and go into this tank behind me into the 150. I don't want to just move one fish into this tank because uh, when you do that sometimes a single fish will get singled out and uh, get ganged up on and that's not a good thing. So um, it was a pretty busy week. I also removed from this tank the uh, Red Empress. The Red Empress was maintaining good color, was looking good, but the fins were showing uh, signs of harassment. So I put the, uh, the Red Empress, who was at the bottom of the pecking order in this tank, and was being beaten up pretty regularly, unfortunately. I moved, I moved him to the 100, and he hasn't had any problems. Uh, the trend, I put him in in the dark, but I kept an eye on it, and uh, he seems to have fit in fine. The tank is, is uh, pretty heavily populated, so he got probably lost in the mix. And so, um, at any rate, that's where the Red Empress is. The, um, when I brought over the, uh, as I mentioned in the video, the, the, the video up here on, on uh, let me get this, uh, the screen back up. As I mentioned on this one video, had to do it. Don't don't kill each other. When I brought over the um, when I brought over the sand diver, he got into lip locking and into a battle with um, with the white lips, the Maduka white lips. And so here I am watching this thing play out, and I'm and I'm like, what am I going to do? I've got two fish that I absolutely love. Uh, I've waited a long time to have a colored up male sand diver. And I love that Maduka White Lips. He's one of my favorite all-time fish. So I'm watching this thing play out. And I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do? I have to put the, uh, put the sand diver back, uh, put a divider in. I'm thinking all these things. And all of a sudden, it just sort of settled out. They sort of worked out their differences. And at first, the uh, sand diver was staying near the top of the tank and the White Lips near the bottom. So they kind of worked out their territory. And now they're just swimming in and out and 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 uh, and getting along fine. So, uh, fingers crossed. Anyone who keeps African cichlids knows that that kind of thing can change uh, immediately. So, <laughs> so fingers crossed on that one. So, um, let's take a look at what's coming up. Uh, we have a couple cool things coming up here, and um, I'm going to put out a series of uh, uh, canister love and hate videos. Uh, you, you folks know that I had some problems with my uh, Sun Sun uh, 704. Actually, two Sun Sun 704Bs within a month of each other uh, had O-ring failures. Almost like a planned obsolescence. So um, so at any rate, what, what I had to do is I had some O-rings that I had to swap out, and I put some silicone grease on them, and I got, I've got one of them uh, back up to working right, um, and uh, but I'm going to put up uh, put out a video on um, on what I love about canisters and what I hate about canisters. This tank is now running without um, without any uh, additional filtration. It's just the sump right now, and the conditions are are actually pretty good. I, I like what I'm seeing, and uh, I'll show you the the. Uh, Here's the fish cam. You can see the, the, the side view there. Sorry about the glare, but, um, you know, I like what I'm seeing. The, 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 the tank is staying pretty clean. I have a, um, I have a power head that's, that's moving water uh, from, from our perspective towards the, uh, uh, towards the uh, overflow box on the other end of the tank. And uh, at, any, at any rate, it seems to be working fine without the uh, without the Sun Sun canister, which I was using strictly for uh, mechanical filtration. So what do you think? Do you think I should put the canister back on? Or do you think I should just let it go with just the sump? I mean, the water turnover is, uh, I mean, the, the pump is rated at 1,900 gallons an hour. Uh, so the water turnover is fine. I mean, with, with the loss of head pressure, you know, the amount of uh, distance the pump has to move the water up to get it to the tank, you do lose some of those gallons per hour. But uh, it seems to be doing a, a good job, so I might just um, I might just keep it going. And you can see here the the fish cam. You can see. Sorry about the glare on the fish cam because of the lighting, the way it's set up. But you can see the water quality is pretty good on there. So at any rate, so I'm going to put out two uh, two videos on. Uh, videos on my thoughts about 
canisters. And uh, you folks certainly on the chat can share what you like about them and what you don't like about them. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Go ahead and, and use the, the chat function. And uh, certainly if you watch this video after it posts, go ahead and post your comments below. I'd like to hear what you think about canister filters. People seem to be in a sort of a love-hate relationship with them. And, uh, and they certainly have thoughts about Sun Sun versus Eheim versus Fluval, you know, things of that nature. So I'm going to tackle those topics in those two upcoming videos. So um, another thing that's coming up that I'm pretty excited about is I'm going to be, I'm going to be involved in a uh, collaboration a collaboration with uh, three fish keepers that I like a lot on YouTube and you folks are probably familiar with them and and maybe maybe one or two of them might even be on the on the stream but uh, we have Paul the inventory king uh, someone who I was in touch with when I first got on YouTube and who uh, we've, we've we've talked a lot over the years uh, Adam C uh, another person I consider a YouTube friend and of course uh, uh, Zenzo, who is a friend, uh, an admin at the Ben O'Cichlid, uh, at the Ben O'Cichlid Facebook page, and uh, the three of them have submitted videos uh, to me where they've talked about uh, their biggest mistakes, the biggest mistakes that they've made in keeping fish, and so I'm going to uh, talk about that and and share that, and uh, you know make my comments on what they talk about, and. Uh, Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I think that's going to be a, a, some cool videos. A bit of a series uh, kind of springing off of this live stream. Uh, I, may, I may release them as three separate videos because um, what they talk about uh, is, are things that, that I'll probably end up commenting on and wanting to talk about, you know, their subjects. And so that may actually take up the amount of time uh, that it would take to do to do like a video. You don't want these videos to be too long So I might do it in three parts and feature each one of them in a separate video about what they've been through and and uh, You know just go to show goes to show that it, I don't care where anybody is and and if you if you follow any fish keeper on YouTube uh, regardless of who they are or how experienced they are uh, you know that they've had at some point something catastrophic I certainly have, um, and you can't really name a major YouTuber who hasn't. And if there is one out there who seems to never have had it, they simply didn't share it. They simply decided not to put it on YouTube, and that's more more likely more likely the issue. So uh, Zenzo, Paul, and uh, Adam are all have all sent me videos where they've uh, where they've come clean and they've talked about their <laughs> their mistakes and. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and talk about that in some videos. So that'll be fun. So uh, with, with that in mind, let's get into today's topic. And, and what I want to do actually is I'm going to do two things. One, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the mistakes that, 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 that certainly kill fish. But also uh, I want you folks who are on this stream right now to share what, what mistakes what mistakes you've made that you feel are significant or, or you know, that were major or catastrophic. And I'm going to take some of your comments uh, like I used to. I know about a year ago I used to take comments and I'd copy and paste them and put them into videos. I want to take some of your comments about this subject, uh, mistakes, uh, mistakes that, uh, that have been made. And uh, I, I want to I take those those comments and use them in some upcoming videos. So if you have some some uh, thoughts on this subject, uh, what you know, what's gone on with you? What kind of things have you run into uh, in that turned out to be mistakes? Please go ahead and share them in the chat, and I'm probably going to pull some of those. I'm going to copy and paste some of those, and uh, and go ahead and uh, and use them in some upcoming videos. And so. Uh, don't 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 share something if you don't don't want me to use it in a video because it will become public domain. <laughs> if you feel if you feel it's too elaborate to share on the chat in today's live stream, go ahead and send me an email 
at ben.o.cichlid and describe it to me there. And uh, be sure to use your name and your YouTube name. And I will go ahead and, and copy and paste it from an email if you feel that the situation was a little bit too detailed for you to get into in a chat. So that's, that's okay too. So um, mistakes, for those of you who know me, you know that mistakes for me, and my biggest mistake, the one mistake that I would say I made that, uh, well, I, I, let, let, me, let me roll that back a little bit. There are two, two mistakes. One, one was um, uh, a time when I actually oxygen starved my fish unintentionally. Some of you have heard that story. There's a video on it. Uh, on oxygen that followed uh, followed that event and somebody on YouTube a youtuber who who I like and respect uh, suggested changing the um, the position of outputs so that you would create a circular motion in a tank and that would move water uh, more towards the intakes of the filters I said hey makes sense well my 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 outputs were were we're breaking up the surface and creating a lot of surface agitation. You can see some of it, uh, some of that going on. Maybe if I'm, no, you can't really. Okay. So um, I usually point my, my outputs in this tank as well. You, you can see the outputs pointed in a way where, where they're, it's breaking up the surface a lot. So there's a lot of oxygen exchange going on at the surface. And uh, what I ended up doing is I, I ended up moving the outputs and putting them below the water line uh, so much that the top of the tank became calm, just became glass. And so there was no exchange. I didn't have a bubbler in the tank. If I'd had a bubbler, it probably would have, would have saved my fish, actually. So uh, I did it at night before I went to bed, and I, and I, and I recommend that anyone watching don't do any major changes before you go to bed or leave your house for a very long time. Uh, you know, a major cleaning, uh, the transferring of fish, uh, you know, things of this nature, uh, you know, redecorate. Don't do anything major to a tank and then have to, have to scoot, you know, have to get out of there. Because what can happen is if there is some distress, even a, even a big water change, if there's some distress, you're going to miss it. And then when you finally do see it, you're going to, um, the, there's going to be some fatality already. In the case of the oxygen uh, deprivation issue that occurred, the fish died off until there was enough oxygen left in the tank to support some of the fish. Unfortunately, that meant that my biggest, most beautiful fish died first and the smaller fish remained. So in the morning, I had five or six beautiful fish that were dead and about two or three smaller fish that were still alive. So uh, that was a, a major mistake. And from it, what I learned is one, always have sur surface tension breakup, which I do now almost too much. I'm almost like I've become like a fiend on it. And number two, what I learned was don't make major changes in a tank um, before I end up, you know, right before I need to leave and be away, do major changes where I can then be around. Like, like when I transferred all the fish around, I, I, I did it when I, I could be there. If I hadn't, you know, I mean, if that, if, if that battle between the sand diver and the Maduka white lips had escalated and, uh, you know, they were out to kill each other, I, I was right there. I could have thrown a net in there and grabbed one of them or, or moved the sand diver back to the 60. I could have done something. Uh, but if it had escalated and I hadn't been home, I, I might have ended up having one of my best, one of my favorite fish dead. So, um, so don't make major changes. My advice, don't make major change, changes before you leave. And, uh, and, and second is, is certainly, uh, uh, you know, watch, watch surface tension, whether you have bubblers or whether you have, uh, uh, you know, power heads pointed to the surface or outputs pointed to the surface. Always have some oxygen exchange. Watch it closely. If you ever see your fish gasping, and I'm not talking after they've, they've been chasing or during a feeding because moving their mouths then is normal. But, um, you know, just in general, if you see a lot of mouth movement, um, realize that, uh, that that's, not really, that's not really normal. Like, look here at the fish. You can see their mouths. Uh, their mouths are, are, are still and shut, 
even though you do have some chasing going on, as you would in a lot of cichlid tanks. So uh, lo look at the mouth on that trout and the mouth on that, that quad, that Morlii quad there. They're, they're, not, they're not working. So if you see any of that going on, uh, that's, that's a sign that you may have low oxygen in your tank. I had that going on in the 60 gallon before I made the changes. So I already had my fish predisposed to oxygen starvation. They're already a little bit predisposed to it. I just thought working their mouth a little bit was kind of normal. I just thought that's, well, isn't that what fish do? They just are constantly doing that. Uh, now, this fish you see right now on the screen, that, uh, that Johnsonite, that, that Johnsonite is at the end of his life. He is actually dying of old age. You notice he's, his coloration is almost gone and he is working his mouth a lot uh, because, well, just to be blunt and frank, because he's dying, he's actually at the end of his life. I put a video on it, uh, a video out on it a while back. Something I hate about keeping fish is because of their life, their short life, you know, relatively short life. Some fish live a long time. I mean, uh, frontosis can go, what, 20, 30 years? But, uh, you know, usually in an aquarium, if you get five years or more out of a fish, that's pretty good. And uh, so that, that Johnson eye, which there he, there he goes, he's coming back on the screen right now. You can see he's lost that beautiful color. He's working his, his mouth uh, Why? But look at, the, look at the mouth of the living stone eye. He's not saying a word. So at any rate, that's the way things should look if you have proper oxygen in the tank. And uh, so my fish were working their mouths a little bit and then I messed with the outputs and I essentially oxygen starved them. It was a very upsetting situation. I reached out to some uh, more experienced fish keepers on YouTube and they helped me figure it out. And uh, it was one of those, uh, you know, it was on me. I, uh, anyway, it was no fun. Um, the other thing, of course, that happened with me was, was uh, rushing a quarantine. And I can't stress this enough. I have a lot of people comment, I've never quarantined for years, blah, blah, blah. It's never been a problem. And, you know, it's one of those things, like I've said before, it's not a problem until it's a problem. And then you, you really wish you had quarantined. If you're drinking out of one of these, be sure you send me a picture so I can put your picture on the uh, on the live stream. And be sure to use the code live stream when you check out from my store, you'll get a 10% discount. So, cheers. So, um, at any rate, yeah, I, I, I introduced Colomeris into my, into my aquarium because of a rushed quarantine. And that was a huge mistake. Now, if we go way back, Let's go way back, uh, when I was six, seven, back before there was um, electricity. And uh, <laughs> I used to do a real thorough cleaning. And this is something you hear from a lot of folks. They really get in there and they give their tank a good scrub. Who hasn't made that mistake when they were first introduced to fish keeping? Uh, it's one of those things that either knock you out of the hobby or you go and you do the research and you realize what you did and then you stay in. But like so many people, I gave my, uh, I gave my tank a real thorough scrubbing and then what ended up happening is I killed off all my stock. So after every major cleaning, I'd have die off. Uh, you know, because why? Well, because I'd kill all my beneficial bacteria and uh, I'd start a cycle, I'd, I'd ammonia, I'd basically, uh, you know, ammonia burned them to death, which was horrible to think of. But, you know, here, here's this six, seven-year-old, very, very proud that he's got his, his tank, you know, nice and spick and spam, and uh, all the fish die. So um, a lot of us have been through that learning curve. And then we start learning about things like, uh, like the cycle, right, the nitrogen cycle. We start to learn about beneficial bacteria. I'm still learning. I mean, that video I put out the other day about stability that's done so well, uh, you know, that, that, that video is all about that. Is a, is, that's a whole new concept. It's a very old concept. It, I mean, the salt community has been working with that concept forever. But, you know, that using the, the sand 
as the home of the beneficial bacteria and using filtration just for particle removal. So um, anyway, old concepts that become new again after we've all spent a tremendous amount of money on uh, media. <laughs> and then we go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe the sand could have been my media. Now, what am I going to do with this tank, this tank behind me here? Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm probably going to put a bed of sand underneath the uh, coral and uh, just make it a little bit harder for them to dig in and, and, and mess around with it. So I'll probably move all the coral to one side and then load it up with a lot of sand uh, so I get a, a two to three inch sand bed. And then and then put the coral on top, and uh, and that way, and that way I'll have sort of a stable sand bed. That and and, and yeah, they'll they'll dig around a little bit, but you know what? I, I don't notice that these guys redecorate too much. Maybe it's because I have all male tanks, and so they're not real anxious to dig nests. Uh, they're not really into breeding that much. I don't really see a lot of a lot of nests being made by these fish, but. Um, at any rate, that's the that's the concern some people have, is that they don't want they, they think that cichlids will disrupt things too much, so they can't put a deep a deep sand bed. But let me tell you that the black sand in the 100 never gets hardly ever gets moved around. It gets moved around by the powerheads, but it doesn't get moved around by the by the fish that much. So, <clears throat> at any rate, I'm probably gonna put a deep sand bed. I uh, was actually talking to Nolan over at Nolan's Aquarium about getting me some, uh, I'd like to put a Ragonite, ideally, something that also helps with buffering. The water that I get here out of the tap is in the high sevens on pH. This tank behind me is about seven, nine, eight, or eight in pH. So um, at any rate, it's gonna be a little bit of a project, we'll see. At the same time, when you have things working, I am a little bit reluctant. A little bit reluctant to uh, to change things. All right, let's take a look at some of your comments. Let's see here. Bear with me while I check something here. Okay, good. Just want to do a little sound check. Make sure things are working the way they're supposed to. And I'm going to pull up some of your comments and get into some of your comments. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and uh, Before I get into your comments, I want to read a few of them that I got last week and um, and then then get into some of the comments for today. Uh, last week we had Broken Texan. Is Broken Texan on the stream today? Broken Texan said, have you ever tested or used Seachem Cichlid Trace? I was thinking about trying a bottle. I don't I don't use uh, I don't use Cichlid Trace. I use the Malawi, uh, the uh, Cichlid Malawi Lake Salt, which is actually more amino acid. I mean, it's uh, more trace minerals, and uh, it's it's. I think it's different from what you're talking about. If anyone on the stream has used the trace, go ahead and comment for Broken Texan. And I'm not even sure if the uh, if the trace minerals I use are making a big difference. All I know is I've had success and good color with my fish. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in one of those sort of traps where I'm afraid to, to get away from using it. Uh, but at any rate, maybe, I, I mean, it is expensive and I don't use it at the, at the recommended dose because I'd be going through a lot of it. But um, I just like adding some trace minerals to the water. Uh, especially trace minerals that are similar to what you would find in, in percentages, similar to what you'd find in, in their natural habitat. Uh, Gabrielle Glover, my cichlids just started fighting. I thought they were kissing, kissing to mate, but no. Now they want to be on the opposite sides of the tank, 
when they meet in the middle, they start uh, kissing and fighting. <laughs> Some fish like it rough. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're kissing. Uh, these fish don't kiss much. Um, if you see lip locking, you have a territory battle. Uh, you have a fish that feels threatened. Uh, there's a variety of things going on. If you have females in the tank, they're they're uh, they're vying for uh, for the uh, to be the dominant one. If it doesn't settle out, like it like it did with the Maduka white lips and my sand diver, if it doesn't settle out and they work out their differences and figure out where they are in the pecking order, uh, you're gonna have to take one of those fish out, or one of them is gonna be killed. I mean, it it's uh, sometimes these fish go to the death, and that's unfortunately not that uncommon. Uh, Raymond BMS, can you also please add on how to naturally fix green water that keeps coming back? Raymond, it sounds like you're having algae bloom issues, algae bloom issues. So, um, I mean, algae needs, uh, I mean, your nitrates might be high. I mean, that, that could be feeding the algae and encouraging the algae. You may be uh, providing too much light you may have high phosphates. There's a variety of things uh, that could be causing that, that green uh, bloom. There are certainly some algae killers, but I'm not sure if I would recommend them because they might also kill, maybe they'll kill some of your beneficial bacteria. You may consider something like an algae scrubber, which will concentrate the algae into one part of your tank. Uh, but it sounds like you're getting an algae bloom. So I would reduce the light I would uh, check for phosphates. I would, uh, you know, things like that. Cichlid shack. Ben, I have 200 plus bare bottom tanks, only sponge filters, no fancy media, no sand, no anything. And so there you go. So um, there, there, so where, uh, where is the beneficial bacteria? Is it in the sponges, James? Is it in your sponges? Do you have a very large, um, uh, you know, a very large reactor? Or something? Do you have a very large uh, tank where the where your tank water is circulating through uh, that might be shared, or, or is there is there some place where there's a lot of beneficial bacteria, uh, or, or are you exclusively relying on the large sponges that you have in each tank? And I think your tanks are individually. Um, I don't think you share tank water. I think that's one of the things that you do that I like. Uh, with fish keepers that that uh, that sell fish that they don't have that way they don't get cross contamination, uh, so so I guess it must be in your sponges and and what that tells us is that okay so a large sponge can also do the job, and so there's a lot of different ways to skin skin that cat as the saying goes, W O W D S M four twenty A. That's the person's YouTube name. Wo Wodesome 420A. My tap water comes out at around 20 parts per million. I have, so this is nitrates we're talking about. I have a beta tank with about a three inch substrate, much thicker than any of my other three tanks substrate. Nitrates in that tank sit around five parts per million, surprisingly, while my other tanks stay at around 20 to 40. Now that's very interesting to me. So here's somebody who's getting high nitrates out of the tap, which would which would mean that you would have tanks that would never have low nitrates, because every time you fill them up, unless you're going out and buying water, you know, from some and bringing it in, so this person is putting 20 parts per million water in a water change into a tank, and that tank's anaerobic bacteria living deep in the in the substrate is is consuming those nitrates. Eating, the, eating up those nitrates and then gassing off. Interesting. While the other tanks are 20 to 40. I find that fascinating. James Green, this may explain why my son's multifacetous, man, I'm butchering that, tank with three plus inches of pool filter sand stays so constant with a single sponge filter. And again, that was the whole the whole point of that video, the stability video, which uh, if Candy can share that, Candy can share that link to the stability video, uh, and I'll share I'll share the link at the end of this video. 
to the stability, uh, tank stability, water changes and tank stability. I think the actual thumbnail was water changes that kill. But um, using the, the untouched sand, the substrate to create stability and then, and then um, you're not going to be messing with things. And uh, Tracy Ann Whitler, Tracy Ann Whitler, I don't know if you're on. Ben, I have a new 55 gallon I'm going to set up as a cichlid tank. Went to the beach and saw multicolored sand that looks like fine gravel. Is it safe to use as this substrate after washing and boil? I imagine if you wash and boil it, uh, I imagine it would be okay, unless what you're seeing is some kind of a additive or something that they've added in the sand there, or maybe something that's broken down, or I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Multicolored sand, I mean, it, it sounds beautiful, but um, I would imagine if you cleaned and boiled it, like you're saying, I imagine it would be okay, but I can't, I don't know, unless we know what that is. What's that broken down? I, I mean, is the entire beach that way? I mean, if it's if it's that way throughout the beach, multicolored, you're probably yeah, you're, it's probably just sand, and uh, you're probably going to be okay. But I don't know. I know there's some kind of rocks that if you put them in a tank, they're going to release toxins and you're going to have a problem. So, is that broken down from that? I mean, I don't know. Uh, Lawrence, and I think it's Skez, S K E G Z, Lawrence. Would all the fish in the tank behind you be okay in a six-foot tank? Could you send me what you have in there, please? I've sent you my email. Lawrence, did, did I did I uh, reply to that already? Did, I, did you send me an email? Uh, send me an email to ben.o.cichlid at gmail. I'll be happy to uh, lay it out for you. I mean, what I have in this tank uh, behind me now is just very, very straightforward. I mean... I have that. Uh, I have the living stone eye. I have the uh, Borley eye quad. I have this that that fire hap that just went by there. I have the Fusco. I have that electric blue, Venusus, and there's also a uh, there. There's that large Pleco that's in there, and uh, there's a Buchochromis nodotania, might be a female, that I might be taking out. And of course, I have that trout, big trout in there that I got from Wonder of Cichlids. There he is. So, um, and of course, I've got that eye biter that I picked up from James over at the Cichlid Shack. So it's not what you would call an overstocked or a heavily stocked tank. It's actually by most Cichlid keepers. Actually, there's a there's a Imperial in there too, a Protomelis Imperial. That's just starting to get its color. Very pretty. And um, at any rate, the, this is not what you would call a heavily stocked tank. This is a very lightly stocked tank as opposed to the 100. I'd have to, I'd have to give, give me half an hour to give you the, the names of the fish in that tank. And this is a six-foot tank. Six feet across. I think it's two feet front to back and about 18 inches. It's, it's not a tall tank. It has a lot of turnaround room and and uh, it's six feet across acrylic uh teacher tomi teacher tomi am i pronouncing that right teacher tomi recently found you on youtube and learning so much good to get different perspectives you're making me want african cichlids again and uh, i love to hear that i think i've been responsible for a lot of folks uh, getting into african cichlids i'm uh, in some ways, I'm sort of one of the last guys standing who has stayed exclusively in cichlids. A lot of my friends were cichlids exclusively. Uh, you know, IFG, Zenzo, uh, Paul, uh, you know, they were, they were all cichlids. Now they're all mixed. They have a bunch, a whole bunch of stuff from, you know, sand skippers to uh, turtles to, and uh, so they've all, they've all diversified, which is a, it's a good thing, I guess. Uh, Adam C., I think he's strictly cichlid still. And, uh, so some people have stayed strictly stick cichlids, and I've uh, certainly, I think I've influenced some people, and I hope I haven't caused any trouble, because I know some folks have had to get into big tanks <laughs> and negotiations with their spouses. Uh, Javier, Javier J. Ben, have you ever kept the horse-faced loach? Uh, Javier, I've never kept a horse-faced loach. 
I saw one once. I think they're uh, crazy looking. I think they're beautiful and very unusual. And I think if I uh, had a tank where I could put loaches, um, you know, maybe, um, and of course I have three clown loaches in my in my 100, but if I had, if I started a new tank, maybe that planted tank or something like that in the future, I, I would consider one because they're very unusual looking. I love the way they look actually, that long, that long face. So let's take a look at some of the comments here. And uh, let's see here. If you have any questions that you would like to ask me, go ahead and ask me now. And uh, I like the conversations that go on between all of you. They don't, you know, I don't mind that you folks get into conversations that uh, have nothing to do with the stream. <laughs> I like seeing you folks helping each other. I think that's kind of cool. And uh, let's see here. Hey, Chris Martin is on. Christopher Martin is the one who did my uh, Cichlids and Coffee logo and sent it to me uh, in an email. And uh, Chris, I'm glad you're on the stream. And yes, I will continue to use that logo until you send me another one. <laughs> I actually like it a lot. Thank you so much for that, Christopher. You're, you're mentioned at the bottom of the comments of every one of my videos, at least my recent ones. There's a little bit of a shout out to you and also to Phil Griffiths for the... Uh, for the logo that I use as the uh, channel, as the channel icon or watermark. I noticed that there's been some deleted comments. Some folks are coming on and I guess are trying to be naughty. But you know that uh, uh, I made a joke one time about how Kevin Green has that software that can tell who the person really is uh, that goes uh, despite their YouTube name. So, uh, you know, Liam, like Liam Nielsen, we, we will find you. We can find you. <laughs> and of course that's a joke uh let's see here l flower one stars your channel is very clear nice thank you thank you for that i'm glad that we're getting some uh, good i'm using the uh, obs uh, platform for broadcasting and uh, it seems to be a little bit uh, a little bit stable Donald Fish Vibes, I have a Red Devil infestation in my original cichlid pond, added three, sold as flower horns, turned out to be Red Devils, and they bred. Now I have a Red Devil pond. Oh my God. <laughs> now I've noticed that any fish, I don't have experience with Red Devils, but usually if a fish has either the word devil or tear in its name, usually those fish are... Uh, are a bit dangerous. So uh, I would be interested in finding out if you're uh, running into a tremendous amount of aggression in that pond. Let's see here. Giovanni Alba, I have bought three or four different Lethronops red cap and they keep dying. Uh, I have found that Lethronops are um, not quite of course, it depends where you bought them from, too, I guess. But I have found that they're not quite as hardy as, um, as, as the usual, you know, run-of-the-mill common cichlids. They seem to be a little bit more sensitive. I, I lost uh, a couple of the ones that I have now over the, over the last 18 months. And, uh, you know, I just come to the tank in the morning and you know, belly up and... Uh, not really sure what happened. They're just not quite as hardy as, let's say, something like a Venusis, a Fusco, something like that. So um, I would uh, limit my water changes maybe to 25%. I would really um, make sure that uh, go go on to like Cichlid Forum, cichlid-forum.com, read up on them, make sure that you're providing uh, very good parameters, both in, you know, in pH uh, you know, water hardness, uh, you know, your KH, make sure the water's hard enough, make sure your temp is nice and stable, be sure your temp matching when you add water, uh, that the temperatures are matched. Uh, add the water slowly. When you do a water change, don't blast it in there. Maybe it'll take longer for your water changes, but trickle it in. Um, not even a trickle, just, you know, just a slow, 
so that there's an acclimation, a little bit more acclimation, and uh, that might help because they are they are a little bit more uh, sensitive and not quite as hardy. I have noticed that. Hey, my smiling Ben, since mail is slow, is it okay to buy online fishies? Uh, Elflower one stars. Uh, I would I would recommend using the um, like the Southwest Airlines overnight freight, uh, so that you get them within five hours of being packaged. That's the way I bought fish from uh, James Largo over at the Cichlidchak, and uh, overnight uh, might be uh, a little bit risky. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I think. Uh, I, I think right now in this time period, I think paying the extra amount for that for that um, you know cargo, the cargo uh, freight would be the way to go. I mean, just just what I'm thinking. And uh, let's see here, Adam C. Candy shared the link to Adam C. Adam C. is one of those uh, folks on YouTube I consider a good guy. He's one of the good guys. Um, he's just a he's just a good fish keeper. I love his fish. He's got some beautiful large cichlids and uh, and he does some breeding. He's gotten into breeding. He's had some success with breeding. If you haven't checked out his channel, check it out. And. Uh, Let's see here. Marty Borst. Hi, Ben. This is Marty from Michigan. I have ammonia coming out of my tap. 0.5 parts per million. Any ideas uh, to bring it down? Uh, well, first of all, I would definitely treat the water before adding it to the tank. I would, in your case, as much as I hate the bucket brigade, and I love using a python to go right from tap to tank. In your case, I would probably put the water in buckets, treat the buckets, and then add the water uh, to my tank. I wouldn't go right from the tap. Uh, ammonia is uh, can be very irritating, if not lethal, to the fish. <clears throat> Joey, uh, the king of DIY, uh, did a video one time on a filtration system that he put at the end of the hose so that he could go right from the tap and then the water would go through the filtration. Uh, he had carbon there, uh, he had some floss, I had a variety of things in inside the tube and then the water would go into the tank. So uh, that's an idea, but I would definitely treat and you know what else I would do? I'd contact your your, uh, your water supplier because that you shouldn't have ammonia in your in your tap water. That's a bad sign. That means that, uh, you know, maybe there's a dead moose in the reservoir or something. <clears throat> uh, Doug Stanton, I used too much safe and killed my favorite fish. It took out too much of the oxygen. Doug, I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware that, and maybe that's the case. Uh, from what I understand, uh, you can use a quarter teaspoon of safe to treat 300 gallons. So it wouldn't be that hard to overdose. I was using it at a quarter teaspoon for 75 gallons just to keep ammonia under control. And then now I've slowly gone back to the recommended dose of um, a quarter teaspoon for 300 gallons. I think it says on the label that you can't overdose, but I, I might be wrong. Uh, but that's good to know. I mean, if you should contact contact Seachem, contact Seachem and ask them about that. I'd be curious about that. If uh, if putting too much, and I, and I definitely would like to know how much did you use? Did you use like three tablespoons in a in a in a fifty gallon or something? I mean, that's. I think you'd have to use a lot to actually create oxygen uh, depletion. But anyway, and also were you running your tank at a high temperature? Were you running in the low 80s, 83, 84? Uh, that also can create, it, make it difficult for oxygen to dissolve. 
uh, in that case, you would definitely need to have like maybe some bubblers going. And uh, anyway, I, I definitely would like to know more about that. And you should definitely, you know, if you contact CCAM, you send them an email, uh, they will respond right away. And they have with me. I asked them some questions a few times and they responded right away. So send them an email and explain what happened and get their in. And I would love to hear. Tell me what they said. You know, send, send me a copy of the, to the ben.o.cichlid at gmail. Send me a copy of what that is because I'd love to hear what happened. <clears throat> Uh, up UPS or live in the dream. I chose not to quarantine thinking I could trust my local fish store and lost 15 out of 20 to ick. Ouch. And that's that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you know, when you look at people like uh, Cunningham Cichlids, uh, Life Fish Direct, James over at, uh, you know, James Largo over at the uh, Cichlid Shack, uh, Trevor O'Shea, the wonder of cichlids, uh, Josh Cunningham, right? Uh, Cunningham Cichlids. These folks are, are extremely conscientious, extremely responsible, and uh, you know they, they really stand behind their fish, and they're not gonna. And so these are fish you can trust. And even then, uh, except one time when it was impossible for me, but uh, even then, I'll put those fish in quarantine for at least a month. As anxious as I am to put them in the in the show tank because I know they'll be beautiful in the show tank, I'll still quarantine them. Uh, because I've learned that lesson the hard way. So, <clears throat> Doug M. in Michigan and has the same issues, I guess, with the ammonia. And I think Michigan, unfortunately, Michigan, unfortunately, has, uh, with the situations up in Flint, has become a bit notorious for water quality. Donald Fish Vibes, all of my fish loss has resulted from distractions. Once I had a visitor I was avoiding while my hose was in my goldfish pond. 12 hours later, only some Oscars in an adjoining space and Pleco survive. Oh boy. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a major distraction. I talk about that when filling up tanks in one of my water change videos. I'll... Uh, I'll include a link to the uh, water change video playlist. You know, you you start texting, you get off onto some Facebook stuff, you come back, you've got water all over the floor. Um, so I never thought of it happening in a pond, but yeah, a pond can overflow as well, and uh, any water treatment that you may have added is going to get diluted by the additional water, and your fish are going to die or end up on the on the deck around the pond. Uh, that's that's kind of horrible. I get, you know. Richard Maloney, my cousin and his friends, fed my fish beer. You need new, fr you need new friends. <laughs> oh, my God. I've heard, by the way, that you can get um, very inexpensive water alarms that you can put outside of your deck or underneath the tank next to a canister filter. And if they, if they sense any kind of humidity, they go off. Uh, some of them are very fancy and expensive and they'll send you a text. Uh, others are just, they just make noise, right? They buzz or they alarm. Um, might not be a bad investment, you know, a little water alarm. I've heard they're, uh, supposedly they're inexpensive. You can get them on eBay and, uh, Let's see here. Oh, geez. Jerry Martin. I had water spots on the outside of the glass, so I took Windex and sprayed the outside. Within hours, lost all my fish. Evidently, the ammonia gases off and can be absorbed into the water. Um, that, that's bad, Jerry. Yeah. The mist. The mist can get into the water as well, uh, especially if you had that lit up. And, um, you know, I remember Pond Guru, he had a, a, a video on how he suggested people clean the outside of their tank. And what he did is he took those, uh, those little scrubby sponges, uh, the kind you use to clean the inside of your tank, dipped it in the tank with tank water and just rubbed it on the outside of the tank and then used a towel to dry it. He said, no chemicals, don't use any chemicals, never get any chemicals next to the tank. 
and uh, that was his suggestion. So um, that's bad. Also, Jerry Martin didn't quarantine just recently and introduced a new serum. It had ick, ick, and trashed my tank, treated it, and lost my favorite serum to the ick. I tell you, uh, not quarantine. It, it works. It works uh, until it doesn't work. It looks like we have a troll on the uh, on the comments. Mallory Quinn, you're the best, most expert fish guy on YouTube. I've looked for others. I can't find anyone better than you. Thank you for your wise words. <laughs> Mallory is my daughter. <laughs> If you're watching, honey, I'll buy. I'll take you out for coffee. <laughs> oh God! All right. Phil Margulies in the '60s, we would wait until the tank smelled like death, then completely clean out the filter and replace all media. Wow! I have never done it that way, Phil. And uh, if it got close to death, I'd probably put charcoal in the filter and try and get the death to go away, but. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, there's uh, a lot of different ways of, of skinning that camp. Andy G, I got some coral sand as my pH was only 7.2, now it's 8.2. Yeah, that, that's, what this, that's what this stuff is supposed to do. It's supposed to buffer, and uh, I have heard over time that it loses some of its potency, like its ability to release uh, minerals. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I mean, it's made of, you know, it's made of calcium and magnesium and and uh, maybe it's not going to release as much, but um, at any rate. Now, if I missed any super chats, I'm sorry. If some of you have super chatted and I noticed Jerry Martin threw $1.99 into the pot. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that, buddy. And let's see here. Adam D. Moore, is there good bacteria? Is there a good bacteria you recommend? I changed my substrate and loved your sand idea. Well, eventually that, that, that uh, good bacteria is going to populate in that substrate. The um, people use, uh, I've heard good reports with Seachem, the Seachem stability, also the Fritz Turbo. Uh, but if you read that article that the uh, fellow, uh, I think it's Griffiths, wrote that I talk about in tank stability, I, I, I put a link in there to that article. And uh, he talks about how the bacteria that's contained in those bottles very often is the wrong bacteria and does very little. So you're better off using media from an established tank uh, or, you know, introducing fish slowly and maybe use some of those products along with uh, Prime, things like that. Introduce fish slowly. Um, the very first few that you add might actually become a little stressed. I've heard things like black skirt tetras can stand a tank that is going through a cycling process. There are certain fish that can stand that, so you can use those fish for the cycling process, then take them back to the fish store or give them away if you wanted them to move into cichlids. Uh, but uh, I've used the sea chem stability, uh, and I, did, I found it was okay. I didn't lose any fish, but I introduced the fish very slowly. And, uh, but nothing beats uh, media, sponges, from an established tank, I keep uh, three or four sponges in the sump underneath this tank that I can pull out. I also keep um, some uh, Brightwell cubes. They're called Brightwell. Brightwell makes these blocks. They also make cubes. I keep like a like a, a handful of Brightwell cubes. I can just grab those, throw them into a, uh, a quarantine tank, and I'll have a, pretty much a, an instantly cycled tank. Just be sure that you treat the water that you're putting into your, don't just use tap into the quarantine tank. I go half tank water, half treated tap, tap water. So it's like a water change. And then something like media or, um, or something like those cubes. JGM, JG4, let me see. I got a comment from JG4 question. I have two large sponge filters, two Fluval 406 and a Generation 3 Hydro 1950, would a second power head be too much for a 72-gallon peacock tank? Right now I have one 
dead spot where detritus sits. I don't know. That's a lot. There's a lot going on, JG. I mean, I'd, I'd probably have to look at a video of what you have going on. I mean, are the fish being pushed around by all the water flow? Uh, I have the out on that 100. I have the output of the uh, Fluval FX6 plus a dual head Sun Sun power head and a single head power head. And the fish do have spots where they do get blown around a little bit. Um, not too much, but uh, I don't know. I, I would reposition reposition those those uh, outputs and see if, you, if that handles the uh, the dead spot. I would do that first. And then if not, you can always pick up pick up an inexpensive uh, you know power head like a you know, 10 15 dollar uh, Sun Sun power head, throw it in there and see see what you think. Uh, that might work. And uh, but I try re re redirecting the outputs. See if that works. Uh, Joseph Fra Fraz, uh, Ben, what do you think about black diamond medium blasting abrasives as gravel or substrate? Now, there are people out there that that swear that that's great that it's that they've used it for years. I've never used it. I have had people mention that uh, that it 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 has sharp edges and with with fish that that sift the sand a lot. Let's say you have geos cichlids to some degree if they're going to be sifting through it a lot that it could be abrasive on their lips and also on their gills because sometimes you notice the sand will go all the way through and uh, so if i had geos i probably would would even consider using it cichlids i don't know i've heard people have success with it and you know things like play sand might be a little less abrasive apparently the sands that are sold by companies like caribbean sea are tumbled so it kind of works off any sharp spots and so it's very easy on the lips and gills of the fish something to consider at the same time if you google it around you'll find a lot of people talking about how they've had success with uh with the black diamond uh, my concern is if it creates abrasive abrasion abrasiveness or if it's abrasive and creates abrasions uh those abrasions could be areas where uh parasites, uh, bacteria, you know, things of that nature can get in. And so you'll predispose the fish to some kind of, of uh, you know, it'll make them more likely to have a problem. So I, I don't know. I would probably, uh, Elior, hello from, uh, hello Elior over in Israel. Thank you for tuning in. My son recently visited Israel, loved it, enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, Let's see here. If I've missed your comment, I'm, I'll probably catch it next week. And if I missed your super chat, I'm sorry. I'll catch it next week for sure. Scott Backer, tank negotiations are fairly straightforward for me. If I want a new tank, I must first set up a new one for my wife. Kind of sounds like the arrangement that uh, John and Lisa have over at the uh, KG uh, Tropicals. <laughs> I usually have to do a um, some major chore, like paint a wall or something, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you uh, want to get a new tank, there's usually a way if you know how to negotiate. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let's see here. We're running actually right over the hour. Hey, Denny. I don't know if I've, if, I've, if I've given you a shout out yet. And let's see here. Now, UPS are living the dream. How mean would a baby electric blue jack Dempsey be? And could I put one or an African cichlid with my rainbows? I don't know. That's trouble. I think that's trouble waiting to happen. And uh, so I wouldn't necessarily suggest that. You know, uh, Jack Dempsey uh, was a famous boxer. And uh, so does that tell you something about the fish? So if they're named after a boxer, if they're named after a, a, a serial killer, if they're named, if they have the word tear or devil in the name, I think I would avoid that. <laughs> so uh, it might work. Until the Dempsey uh, gets like over two inches, and then it's going to be off, 
off to the boxing match, off to the uh, Battle Royale. Yeah, that was my experience, Doug M. I was afraid of air freight. I was afraid of the cost of air freight. It's not cheap. But if you buy several fish at once, it, it sort of evens it out a little bit. Uh, if you're crazy like me and buy, uh, you know, buy one eye-biter, <laughs> you pay a premium. But, um, but if you buy several fish at once, the, the cost of the freight kind of evens out. And, uh, and yes, you get your fish fast, and it's great. It's just a great way to, uh, to get your fish. And uh, Candy is working overtime, deleting some messages. Thank you, Candy, for being on top of it. And to my other uh, moderators, I'm sure you've been on it too. Let's see. Uh, Mike McGinnis, I don't use uh, I don't use Perigen anymore. Once my tax tanks became very clear, uh, you know, and, and you know, you can see in the in the tanks how how. Uh, there's no real, I, I don't have any issue with uh, cloudiness or, or particles. Once they become established, uh, I stopped using Purigen. And, uh, but when I was using it, it was the last thing that the water would touch before going, before the water returned to the tank. So that means that in a fluval, it would be at the bottom. In a sun sun, it would be at the top. And so um, if I had a large hang on back filter, it would be the last thing the water would roll over before it goes to the tank. I've had he heard some concerns about uh, using chemical filtration like Chemipure and Purigen and being able to get uh, the anaerobic bacteria to grow. I have heard that that's a, con that's a concern. So I'm not sure about the validity, validity of that. I haven't done any real research on it, but uh, at any rate so let's see what else we got here Javier J no I have never kept brackish brackish fish brackish water fish and repsage repsage 74 thank you so much for that super chat and the dancing chicken thank you so much for that <laughs> I didn't know a chicken could give you a thumbs up, but I, I think it's very cute. Thank you so much. So at any rate, um, thank you everybody for sitting in. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that sub that sub button. Be sure to uh, rate and uh, and like and all that good stuff. And I hope to uh, see you next week at next week's uh, Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And be sure to. Uh, we do a little transition here and come by and visit uh, visit the Facebook page. If you're not a member, go to go to the Facebook page, Ben O Apostrophe Cichlid. Be sure to answer all the questions. I you know we hate turning people down, but if they don't answer all the questions, we have, we we don't let them in the group. That's how we keep bots and trolls from getting in. So you have to answer all the questions, including that you've read the rules and you agree to the rules. So be sure you do that. So if you tried to get in the group and you were denied. That's probably why. So be sure to answer all the questions. Uh, be sure to, and um, so it's up here, the group, the right up here. And uh, also you can follow on Instagram, ben.o.cichlid. And uh, that's it for today's live stream. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. You are appreciated. Hope to see you next week and uh, hope to see your comments under this video and under the upcoming videos that I have. Uh, and also I'm gonna post some uh, at the end of this video i'll post some uh, some playlists that i think you'll enjoy so take a look at those too all right thank you everybody thank you moderators you're the best on youtube and thank you to everyone who super chatted very appreciated your support of the channel and to those of you who have purchased merchandise at the teespring site thank you so much for that bye bye everybody that's it for me